Okay, in this video I'm going to do another trigonometric substitution. Um, it's supposed to say substitution. And this one's going to be a little trickier, I think, because um, when you first see it, you know, when you just see this original problem, typically you have square roots floating around um, and you don't have these x terms either. But we can rewrite things. Um, basically, when you see this fractional exponent and you see the denominator of 2, remember we can rewrite fractional exponents in radical notation. The first thing I'm going to do is write my 5 halves as the 1 half to the 5th power. And well, our, there's our 1 half power. That's going to turn into our square root. So now we have a square root uh, cropping up. So a couple other things here too, because typically in these problems you do not have the the uh, x to the first power terms floating around. Okay, so actually the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to complete the square on the denominator to rewrite this. Okay, so we have 5 minus 4x minus x squared. Now the way we complete the square is, typically I rewrite it in descending power, negative x squared minus 4x plus 5. In your head, you kind of group the x terms together. Whatever the coefficient on the x squared term is, you have to factor that out. So this will come out as a minus x squared plus 4x, and then we still have our plus 5 hanging out. I didn't factor the negative out of that part. Okay, so now with completing the square, if you'll recall, and if not, I've got some other videos exclusively devoted to completing the square, so I'm not going to spend as much time on it here. The idea is you take half of the middle term, which will give you 2, you square that term, so 1 half of the middle term is 2, you then square that term and you stick it back inside. So I get plus 4. Okay, my plus 5 was already hanging out there. But, you know, certainly, right now I have an equal sign, and this is not equal. I mean, imagine distributing out the negative. You'll get negative x squared, hey, we already had that. Negative 4x, hey, we already had that. My plus 5 is already accounted for. So if I multiply, I'm, I'm going to get an extra negative 4 that was not in that problem. Well, to keep everything even, I need to add 4. Okay, so now everything is equal. You can multiply all of this out and simplify it and check to make sure that you get back the original thing. So now x squared plus 4x plus 4. The point is this is now a perfect square. I can write this as x plus 2 squared. And then I have my plus 9 hanging out. And I can now rewrite this as 9 minus x plus 2 quantity squared. Okay, so now it looks more like a number minus something to me with a variable squared, which is a trig substitution. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back over. Let's just erase it all. And, okay, I'll keep my bottom one because that's the one that we uh, stopped with last. So I'm going to go back up here to the top. We'll see if we can get through it in this video. Trig substitution is really long, unfortunately. Um, you know, even when you know exactly what you're doing, it's a long process. Um, okay, so underneath the square root, we said we had 9 minus the quantity x plus 2 squared. And again, that's all being raised to the fifth power. We don't, whoops, sorry. Um, I'm looking at my problem, not that screen. Okay, so there's our original integral after we copy it back down, again, after we've just completed the square on it. So we've just rewritten it a little bit. Um, some people like to do it. I mean, you don't have to. At this point, you could do even a little u substitution. u would be x plus 2. du would then just be dx. So now we can rewrite our integral as du over the square root of 9 minus u squared all raised to the fifth power. Okay, and now it does look very much like a trig substitution problem. Okay, so remember the substitution that you use in this case. If it's a number squared minus a variable squared, we'll use the substitution the variable, which in this case is u, equals 3. You take the square root of the number, sine theta. 
All right, so if we calculate du from that, we'll get 3 cosine theta d theta. All right, so when we go to integrate, it says, again, du on top. So I'll replace my du with my 3 cosine theta d theta. And then underneath the square root, I've got 9 minus u quantity squared. But if I square u, I'll get 9 sine squared theta. All right, so maybe we'll take this up here. Okay, so now I'm just going to simplify. I'll pull the 3 out front. I still have my cosine theta d theta left over. Notice you could factor a 9 out of the denominator. You could make this 9 times 1 minus sine squared theta. Back on this step, if we just factor the 9 out, whoops, i got to be careful. See, I already left my 5 out, so let's don't do that. Okay, so there's the 5 back again. So you can factor the 9 out of the square root as a 3, so that will actually come out as an extra 3 out front. And then what I'm going to do is there's a trig identity we can use on 1 minus sine squared theta. And remember, 1 minus sine squared theta is just cosine squared theta. Okay, that's all being raised to the fifth power now. So the threes cancel out and we're left simply with, we've got cosine theta on top, d theta. If I take the square root of cosine squared, I just get cosine, but if I raise it to the fifth power, um, I'll get cosine to the fifth power, theta. Well, now we can cancel things out. This will be 1 over cosine to the fourth theta, d theta. And 1 over cosine is secant, so really we have to integrate secant to the fourth theta, d theta. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, we've done a done a lot of uh, a lot of work here so far. And now the question is, how do you integrate secant to the fourth theta? Well, I can rewrite that as secant squared theta times secant squared theta. And remember, we have a trig identity for secant squared theta that says that's equal to 1 plus tangent squared theta d theta. OK, so this is just a trigonometric integral now. Uh, where'd my? All right, so I have to give myself some more space. So we want to remember that our u was x plus 2, so I want to write that down real quick so I don't forget that. And now we'll go back up here. Okay, we also want to remember that we use the substitution um, u equals, what we use? u equals 3 sine theta. All right, so at this point, um, we've got to integrate secant squared 1 plus tangent squared very long. And what we have to do in this case is we just, I guess I shouldn't use u again, we'll use w. w equals tangent theta. The derivative of w is secant squared theta, d theta. And now if I, re if I replace all of my stuff with that, it says w is tangent theta, so I'll get 1 plus w squared, and then dw um, took care of the secant squared theta, d theta, so I'll just have 1 plus w squared, dw. All right, so we're getting close here. Um, I think I'm going to step over the time limit for sure, so I'm going to cut this one off. Um, I'll immediately have a follow-up video knocking this off right here, so take a look forward. It should be right, right nearby.